Last time on Stranded in Fantasy. Fuck the dragon! Journal entry 244. All right, we made our plans. Our trip back to Winterfield. We're going to head the same way we took getting here originally. Cutting across the wilderness. Pay a visit to New Chicago. Resupply it brightly and then make our way to our destination. We managed to negotiate with Reyna for Marcus. She's calmed down a bit, but she's still a bit pissy at us since we're still treating her the same even though we know her secret. She's expecting to be worshipped or taken in awe and fear. Maybe she deserves it, but I'm certainly not going to give her the satisfaction. To me, she's still the elf groupie that got knocked up in the tavern. Probably not the appropriate things to say about Marcus's wife, but that's how I feel. Anyways, we still got some supply shopping to do. We let our three students know that we're up to. They wanted to come. But it's too dangerous. They need to be here. Journal Entry 245 About a day's walk and we're still not out of the kingdom. We were set up in one of the farming settlement's inns for the night with some adventurers passing through. They came in from Ashvale and had been on foot and living off the land for two months. They seemed in good spirits and somehow ended up in a drinking contest. I don't remember who won, but I woke up in their female shifter's bedroom, so I guess that's a victory of some sort. Maybe. Anyways, we're getting ready to leave. This will have been the last bed and warm meal that we're going to have for a few days. Journal Entry 246 It's been several days. We were tromping through the woods when we break out into a clearing and there it is. New Chicago. The kobolds immediately panic and grab for anything they can use as a weapon until they realize who we are. So welcome to New Chicago, the kobold village. They have about five buildings built, each less ramshackle than the last, so they are improving. Their farmland is kind of a mess, so we're going to share some farming knowledge with them since they have the very basics down. We spent some time in one of their buildings regaling our adventures and hearing about their first year of struggle. They didn't manage to get their farm up in time for winter, but managed to survive on hunting and fishing and once things froze over, they figured out ice fishing on their own from the nearby lake. There's a bunch of little ones running around, so I'd say this is a success so far. Good for them. Alex was a bit weirded out they were so casual with the kobolds. The only ones he's ever met were the feral or bandits. Avery had no problems since she's used to us making friends with the odd tribal or two. So we're staying an extra night to make sure they get all this farming knowledge down and see if he can give suggestions on how to improve their construction. Journal Entry 247 well, we said goodbye to our kobold friends and headed back to the wilds. We were escorted to their border by a few of the rangers and off we went. Sure, they may smell, but they're all right little people. Maybe one day, when they become a city, they'll start their own trade route to Aeon. God, I hope Marcus doesn't bed one of them. Anyways, tonight though, we're camped at the foot of the mountains. We have a short distance to cross over. Last time it took two to three days if I remember right. It was also cold at the time. It's a lot warmer this time, but the winds are pretty strong. We gathered up and watched Strange Days. We've taken up almost ritual behavior with watching it. Things we say and do during specific scenes. It's creepy looking back on it. On the other hand, it gave me an idea. So what if we start publishing plays based off Earth movies or Earth plays? That'd be amusing. If I were feeling particularly evil, I could unleash Rocky Horror unto this world. Journal Entry 248 We are in the mountains and camped out in the shipwreck. It was fun watching Alex try and figure out how this got up here. He figures some kind of misfire greater teleportation effect. We marked our passing inside again and just as we were about to start cooking, the Ryan Graf spymaster appeared and was immediately stabbed in the face by Jason, who was apparently ready for him. He vanished again. It was so fast Alex didn't even recognize or realize something's happened. So how did Jason know he was coming? I asked. He just shrugs and smiles. What the fuck? After I managed to calm down and after dinner, we sat around the fire and saw who could make the most outlandish tale as to how this regular ship managed to crash in the mountains, hundreds of miles from any body of water large enough to hold it. Mike won with a tale of demons and devils gambling, sea elven tsunami cannons and alien intervention. 
The guy's got an imagination. Damn. Journal entry 249. Still in the mountains. It's too windy for an open fire, so we've got no warmth outside our camp blankets and using flashlights and our tablets for light entertainment and no way to cook our food. The camp morale is low and everyone is worn out from climbing up and down, struggling to keep balance and dealing with the occasional wild animal. We had a big bear incident, one of the dire types. I managed to convince it to not attack, but every time I made it go away, it would come back an hour later. It was hungry and angry that something was in its territory. Very primal instincts, very raw, pure feeling, but dangerous. We finally had to put it down with spells and bullets, or we'd be at risk at getting attacked all through the night. Went over the map. We should be out of the mountains tomorrow and be at Brightly a few days after that. Possibly a week depending. It'll sure be nice having beds again. Journal Entry 250 So we make it out of the mountains and are tromping through the woods when I start feeling this odd presence again. It's hard to describe, but I can't focus on it. Then blam, we walk right into a beehive. Fucking bees. Mike panics, screams that he's allergic, and starts blindly throwing black fire everywhere. The man who threw down and went toe to toe with an archmage and consorts with demons and he's terrified of bees. I try and bring up the concentration to help him gain control while I'm being stung. We make it out covered in bee stings and Avery's still working at trying to heal them all. God damn it. Anyways, we should have stumbled onto the goat path we followed last time by now. We may be a bit off course. Journal Entry 251 We've been walking for two days now, and just when I'm convinced that we're lost, we break out of the woods and onto the trade road. We were just east of it. We make it to Brightly before nightfall. The place has quieted down for the night except the tavern, filled with loud dragonborn lumberjacks. Marcus got to playing and got them all singing along to Durin Durin stuff. There's another group of humans in town, a trade caravan from Winterfield has been staying here until they hear back from the city. They've been here nearly a year and are afraid to return since the barbarian sacking of the town. We invited them along, but they declined. Come morning, we're going to resupply and head out. It'll be nice to sleep in a bed tonight and get a warm meal. This trail ration shit gets tiresome. Journal Entry 252 The Brightly to Wild Lake airship was coming in for a landing while we were on our way out. It's only been a few months since they started this route. Shifting over from the Wild Lake to Winterfield run when the Civil War started. Already the city's expanded in signs of new prosperity. The people are wearing newer clothes, using better and newer tools, and so on. Anyways, we should have been a few days on this road before we hit the plains, then Winterfield. I'm not sure what we'll encounter when we get there, and no one seems to know the condition of Winterfield. Maybe the whole city will be destroyed, or under barbarian occupation. Or maybe they eventually won the conflict. That's what we're here to find out. That and vengeance. Hopefully we won't have bandit issues. Journal Entry 253 We came across an abandoned caravan style wagon in the middle of the road. One of its wheels were broken and there was signs of old blood but no bodies. I didn't detect anyone so if anyone survived or the ones who caused it may have been long gone. Nothing worth scavenging. A few hours further down the road we came across long dead horses along the side of the road. If it was bandits, I'm not picking them up nearby. We'll see I guess. We're doing double guards for the night because of our encounters. I've got first shift with Mike. Whatever was been prowling around the road may have left long ago. Anyways, Mike and I have been discussing a few things. Our theory is that we're here to change the world, presumably for the better. So aside from bikes and ballpoint pens, we've introduced implements of war. Is this what we're going to be known for? We're ushering in the age of war? Who had the right to give us this kind of responsibility? Were we picked for this or a random sample? I have long given up on the idea of going home. But I would still like to know. Journal Entry 254 We have exited the Brightly Woods and have crossed the Winterfield border onto the plains. It should be a few days to the city itself. I'm not sure about where the barbarian tribe would have migrated by now, or if they're even still migrating. I guess we'll find out. We've all been holding up well considering the distances we've been traveling. The campfire discussion for the day is a large variety of races and their similarities to fictional work back home. 
Of course, every race has their own creation myths, but are they just myths? Did evolution occur here, or was this a case of divine intervention? That's not exactly something Avery can pray to the sun god for answer to. So is all this just made? How about the similarities? More and more questions. Journal Entry 255 We are camped out on a ridge several miles from Winterfield. It gives us an elevated view and makes it difficult to see us. Unfortunately, that may mean that we can't use a campfire at night. The illumination will give us away. During the day, the smoke. Well, the city is still standing, but it's under prolonged siege by the barbarians. The camp looks far larger than I remember it. Its size reminds me of the Orc War Camp in Wolf Lake. Their encampment circle is the front side of the city just out of range or bow or spell and mounted patrols are regularly being sent out. I wish I had some binoculars with me. The best thing we have is the zoom function on one of the MP3 player's cameras, and it's not really made for this. We're looking around for a better place to set up. Hopefully something with cover, as it looks like it's about to rain, with rain clouds coming our way. Journal Entry 256 We had our first encounter today. We were scouting ahead the area when a barbarian scout party of five rides up spears and swords and demands that we surrender or we're all dead. They were more of a mind to just kill us and loot our corpses. I can just see like Mike's face. So anyway, I started blasting. Mike didn't even let them finish before he was blasting the shit out of them with his magics. I leap in and dominate one of the younger barbarians and force him into spearing the guy next to him. Between us all, we destroyed them before they could even fall out of their saddles. Unfortunately for the horses, they were caught up in the blasts and didn't make it. We checked them for anything of use and then kept looking. It felt good. Somewhere in the back of my mind, the fear from those days, the hunt, was still haunting me. And some of it left with the slaughter of this scout team. Anyways, before nightfall, we came across an old crypt and I've taken residence inside. The dead residing here aren't of the moving variety, and Avery went around ensuring that they never will be. Not without a lot of work, anyways. It's hidden away in a hill and only a few hour walk from the city. It didn't have anything worth looting and the place has already been ransacked, more than once from the look of it. Journal Entry 257 We've begun a campaign of guerrilla warfare against the barbarians. we figured out where the supplies have been coming from. Several roaming camps have been looting the outlaying farmsteads and hunting parties. They resupply at the main supply camp where the women and children are, and then that gets sent to the war party sieging the city after they treat it. If only we had the cover of a forest to work with. The planes make our maneuvering much more difficult. We move at night. Our first target was one of the hunting parties, camping out in the foothills. We caught sight of them entering the area, and then the illumination of the campfire. We snuck in. They were a band of three, armed with bows, javelins, and a series of knives, and one man on watch. We got in close enough without them detecting anything. That alone took a while. Once I got in range, I dominated the one on guard duty and made him bring us the weapons of the others while Jason and Marcus went in to kill the two in their sleep with their blades. I could have had the captive kill his compatriots, but killing one might wake the other and cause unnecessary complications. I tore through my captive's mind looking for tactical information and for a reason as to why they become violent like this. I was half expecting to see reasons similar to the orcs of Wolf Lake, but no. Their warrior culture started breeding contempt for anyone that wasn't them until it was perfectly fine and preferred in their culture to kill any non-tribe members. Hence, they aren't tribals, they're barbarians. I purged the captive. We looted them for anything we could use and headed back to our hideout. They were on foot, unfortunately, so no horses to steal. Journal Entry 258 We caught another horse-mounted patrol. We saw them in the distance and decided to set up a trap. Avery got to be the damsel in distress and managed to attract the group over while we lay in wait around some waist-high grass. Just as they get in close, I make the horses flip the fuck out and dump their riders. Then we pounced. We captured two of the four alive. We're not exactly here to take prisoners, and Avery won't let us just execute them. 
So we sent them loose after making sure they would be a drain on resources. Jason removed their thumbs and Avery healed the wound closed. I purged their memories of us, of what happened, though I made sure one of them believed that they devoured their two compatriots and the missing digits over the course of the night. Not sure how that will bake in, but it's sure to cause some chaos. In the meantime, we're back in our dungeon base trying to figure out a more permanent solution to enemy captives, since we don't have the resources for our POW camp. Our loot for the day, some more gay, more gay? Fuck me. Some more gear, namely more arrows, spears, and javelins. We would have taken the horses, but we can't really house or feed them, which is a shame. It's also a shame that none of us are any good with bows. Even when Marcus tried taking up one, he could never hit a damn thing with it. Well, we have lots of arrows to practice with. Maybe we'll set up a firing range deeper in the crypt. Journal Entry 259 We managed to intercept one of the supply wagons heading for the war camp. Loads of salted and smoked meat and a barrel of mead. They had three people, women, and one male guard. We disposed of the male guard and I wiped the memories of the women. As for the wagon and its cargo, it was more than we could use. So we moved it to a valley, got what we could, and Mike burned the rest. So now we have some alcohol. Best not to abuse it in this situation, but Jason wants to try something a bit more daring with our next raid. He wants to infiltrate the supply camp. I won't tell him no, but that's really fucking dangerous. I hope it's not the mead planning this for him. Journal Entry 260 Well, we made sure we had clear heads and made a plan and Jason went in. I lent him my gun for this one, just in case. So we waited for nightfall and then for things to calm down at the camp for the night. Jason slipped off and we waited. After what felt like hours, a fire erupted across the camp. Lots of yelling, and the whole camp woke up to try and put it out. Jason showed up shortly after, and gave us the rundown. He managed to cripple their pinned horses, and while checking out some of the unoccupied tents, found a load of water skins, a map, and a barrel of lamp oil. So we have a new map, and the barbarian women and children have a burning camp. We went back to our hideout before sunup and celebrated. Jason returned my pistol, and we checked over the new map. It only covered the general area of Winterfield, but it was in greater detail than my continental map. Journal Entry 261 I guess we were followed. Either that or one of the scouts heard our celebration. A group of 30 or so barbarians set up outside of our crypt base, archers holding the door. The first few swordsmen they sent in died fast. Anytime we peered around a corner, the archers would try and hit us, so we had a standoff. So things go quiet and we start wondering what they're doing. Alice sticks his iPod around the corner and snaps a picture. They're building a bonfire at the entrance. I don't think this place has vents and certainly no other exit. Then they start to fire. With the bonfire blocking the entrance, the archers can't draw a good beat on us. Alex pops around the corner and hits the bonfire with some ice magic and puts it out. They try again and Alex puts it out. This goes on for an hour. Finally, they clear out the now mostly frozen wood and decide to do a charge. The crypt isn't really that wide. They can get in two at a time. Mike and Alex step out and unleash everything. Marcus starts playing some empowerment song, Avery throws around some defensive blessings, and I do my best to fuck up the minds of those that aren't caught up in the blasts. We put down about half of them before they decide to retreat and get more people. Our fight filled the crypt up with smoke and we're having trouble breathing, so we pack up and leave as well. We're camped out in the foothills now. I guess we got their attention. Journal Entry 262 So I'm getting a nice sleep in when Mike raises the alarm. Barbarians and horses riding towards us. We grab everything and make a run for a more defensible location. We head down between the foothills with a plan to get up on the higher ground when Jason suddenly stops us. He says there's a shitload of traps in the grass. Then groups of barbarian archers spring up along the hilltop and start firing down at us. We got played good. They have no interest in taking prisoners. So we do what we're good at. We fight back. Avery starts throwing out defenses and heals. 
Our spell casters throwing around their widest area attacks and their own defenses, and I open fire between mind rape. In the end, we turned the tide and got them on the run, but suffered a lot of injuries. Jason's Kindle caught a few arrows and won't start anymore. Mike's MP3 player was smashed. Avery's so burned out that we're still not fully recovered. I'm a bit lightheaded from blood loss. I don't know how we'll manage if they come at us like that again. Journal Entry 263 It feels good to not have any open wounds anymore. Thank God for Avery. Thank the Sun God, I guess? We ran into another patrol over the night while we were relocating and took them down. We captured four horses and we've taken to riding them. Some we have to double up on, so we're slow going, but at least we're going. No stirrups. Well, we have gotten their attention. The patrol was looking for us specifically. I wonder how much we're managing to pull away from the main siege force. Anyways, we're set up in the high ground this time, with the horses tied up below on the side facing away from the direction we'd expect patrols to come from, namely the siege camp. Mike's pretty depressed about his MP3 player, but Alex got it in his head that maybe Austin can fix it back in Alien from what he learns with artificing. A partially magic MP3 player. How does that even work? Journal Entry 264 We surprise another hunting party today. No horses. We managed to capture them all this time. They've been dethumbed and sent back with new memories. I tried something new, making them believe that this is all a dream that they can wake up from if they try hard enough. I wonder how the tribe deals with crazy people. Probably with murder. So Avery's been troubled. I had a talk with her. All of this may be too much for her. She has her faith and believes that what we're doing is okay as long as we don't step over the line and needlessly start executing them. It's the stress. We've been at this for a while. So we decided that we'll see about capturing a few more horses and then head to Brightly for a few days. Catch our breaths and get some decent rest for a change. A nice hot meal. Journal Entry 265 We destroyed a scout patrol and managed to capture enough horses. We looted them and sent back the D-Thumb survivor believing that he's secretly a dragon and wants to eat everybody. We immediately headed for the road to Brightly. With horses, we should be able to get there by tomorrow. Maybe we can get some stirrups made there. We're camped out on the trade road. We shouldn't have any problems. I don't imagine the barbarians run this far out of their territory, but we have guard rotations anyway just in case. Journal Entry 266 We're back in Brightly. Jason and Mike are trying to get us a few stirrups made between the blacksmith and the leather works. The rest of us are hanging out in the tavern. We're the only humans here again, so the Dragonborn are giving us special attention. We got our good night's rest and decided to stick around for a few days. Maybe the barbarians will forget about us long enough that we can start surprising them again when we return. In the meantime, Marcus is keeping everyone entertained. Though Avery keeps reminding him about what's waiting for him back in Alien should he decide to bed one of the locals. <laughs> Poor guy. Journal Entry 267 We got our stirrups. They took a few tries, but the leather worker finally got the idea. They were free. In exchange, he gets to produce more. Just as long as the barbarians don't get their hands on them. They are detachable from the barbarian saddles our horses came with, so if we have to leave, we can take them with us. They're held on with some hooks and a buckle. Quick break for the story, that actually is how it works. Stirrups are held on by a little fucking hook. And a lot of times, if you don't put them on right, you'll be riding along. Your stirrups will fucking come right the fuck off because you weren't hooked on correctly. <laughs> so, the only thing holding stirrups in place is friction and a hook. Back to the story. We gave them some test runs and they seemed sturdy enough. We then got the horses properly shooed because they apparently weren't. Avery has named hers Matilda. I'm not going to bother naming mine until I'm sure I'm going to have it longer than a week. Hell, I didn't bother naming the last one either, and I had that one for a while. Anyway, speaking of Avery, she's broadcasting loneliness pretty hard. I'm going to go over and try and help make her feel better. Journal Entry 268 Well, I'm not sure what to say. Apparently, I was pretty lonely too. The next thing I know, we're in my room. Hey James, put here the eagle going, and then they fucked, like right here. That, that really, that was tied all together, I think. Stuff happened. I'm not sure what to make of it afterwards. Our relationship hasn't really been more than familial than this, and some of her holy spells going off like that were... I don't know. 
I don't think the others know, aside from Marcus anyways. His barred senses apparently automatically let him know who is sleeping with whom. He's been smug all day and vaguely hinting about it in conversation. I swear to god I'm going to wreck his ass if he keeps this up. Anyways, Avery and I have decided that maybe it wasn't a good idea and we're not going to talk about it any further. Also, just because we've been intimate doesn't mean you can read my journal, Avery. What makes you think I'm reading your journal? Maybe you're just paranoid. Journal Entry 2 69 Nice. We decided that we're heading out tomorrow. We got freshened up, had a little rest, and it was time to get back out in the field. So we're all sitting in the tavern with the map planning over our next move when Jason suddenly gives off one of the camp warning signs. Suddenly, the Ryan Graf Spymaster appears. Jason immediately disarms him and we tackle him to the ground. Mike starts tying him up. We caught the motherfucker. He won't talk and I can't get anything out of him. It's like his mind isn't even there. So we drag him out back. We decide we're going to torture him. We only know one method that doesn't involve cutting things off or pointless threats and hot pokers. We waterboard him. Nothing seemed to happen at first. Then we realize that he doesn't breathe. Avery tries hitting him with one of her anti-undead spells and nothing happens. He starts laughing at us and says he'll see us next time. Then his throat exploded, spraying us with blood, and then his body vanished, leaving the ropes behind. Fucking hell. Journal Entry 270 We're back on the road, and should be back in Winterfield by tomorrow. The damnedest thing happened while on the road. We're riding along, and suddenly all our wireless devices pick up an ad hoc Wi-Fi signal. We pull to a stop, and it vanishes. I don't feel anyone around. Jason doesn't see anyone or anything. We tie up our horses and scour the bordering woods for several hours before giving up. Maybe it was some kind of atmospheric or EM disturbance. I don't know how to explain it. We rode on at a good clip to make up for our time before nightfall. Mike is digging through Avery's laptop to see if anything was moved by the connection but it doesn't look like it so far. It got me thinking though, is it possible that anyone from the last group is still around, using magic of some sort to stay young. If so, wouldn't they have tried to make contact yet? So what if I was in their shoes, ageless somehow, and starting to hearing about more Terrans showing up? Yeah, I'd try and find them as soon as possible and give them as much help as I could. I brought it up at our campfire discussion, and we all agreed we would do the same. Those first weeks were terrifying. No one you have to go through that alone and without guidance. And that's the end of this chapter of Stranded in Fantasy. If you enjoy the story and other stories just like them, be sure to subscribe to Neckbeardia and click the bell icon so you know when the videos are released through the week. Additionally, if you're a huge Isekai fan, go over to Nerdbeardia where I'm writing the Veil Riders, where K meets fantasy. Additionally, there are the Discord servers. I'm sure you've heard all about them recently. I am a DM on the West March server. If you like grisly adventures, well, you could hop on over and try to get a game in. However, they are in beta phase, or have a we have a a little ratio askew from DMs to players, so it may be a while until you get in there. Hard to say. But we do appreciate all of y'all's patience in that whole regard. This has been Garbro, and I will see you next time. Nice. All